Hello, my name's Sam, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to my office. So today I want to go over my very few 2022 stats that I have and kind of talk about my 2023. Let's start with my 2022 stats um, and then we'll move on to my goals and how severely I had failed them. So the only real stat that I have for 2022 is the fact that I read 105 books. Every year I have a goal of reading 100 books a year. Um, I just find that it's a it's a fairly consistent goal that works for me. Um, it's not like a make it or break it kind of thing but it's one that just kind of works for my reading style and my lifestyle. So that's that but I don't really have statistics on how things were rated I guess. So I have Storygraph um, and that's my main platform that I use. Um, I use Storygraph and I usually have a reading notebook um, so I don't really have like good statistics on even what I was rating books. Um, I don't feel like I had a, a really good rate reading year for 2022 and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I explored thrillers a lot this year um, and I did not like them. Yeah consistently like three star and below for pretty much every single thriller that I read um, and I, I read quite a few. I probably read at least 10 and my lowest rated books of the year well that book by Richard Matheson that I don't ever want to talk about again because that was that was like negative five stars. Um, Something in the Water by Katherine Steadman. The worst. I gave it 0.5 stars. It was awful. I hated it. And I, I, I definitely read some good things this year but I feel like a lot of the time like the bad and the eh okay really outweighed um, the good at least in how I'm feeling. But for 2023 that is all going to change. We are going to have a much more organized system, um, one that's easier for me to maintain and to look at as we go. So let me grab what my goals for 2022 were and then we can go over what my goals were. Oh hi kid. Hello. So. I did not do well on my goals for 2022. Um, so my first goal of 2022 was to fill out the thoughts section for every book I read. Um, there's like, I, I stopped doing that so early on. I did that for three books before I gave up. Um, so clearly that didn't work. My second goal was to read 100 books, which I did. I read 105. My third one was to create a book stats Excel sheet. So I kind of did that. Um, so what I was talking about there was more of making a sheet of all the books that I own to kind of keep track of those um, and see what I'm reading from what I own. And I started that. I haven't finished it yet. It's a process. There's, I have four overflowing Ikea Billy bookshelves. My fourth goal was read five books from non-American authors. So I might have done that or I might have not um, because I did not keep like an easy way or even like a manageable way to figure out if that happened or not. I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. Um, so I could have done that or I could have not. I don't know. Next I had participate in the NB book club which I did for three months and then I fell off. Which I really regret because I know that they read some pretty awesome things um, and I didn't participate. That makes me sad. Um, the next one was read 10 nonfiction books. So I read nine. So I'm gonna count that as a win. Why not? I'm gonna count it as a win. That was close enough in my book. Um, and nonfiction isn't really something that I super prioritize. Then I had Analyze a N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth Trilogy, which I did. Um, and I did film it. And I don't think I ever put it up. 
so N.K. Jemisin is one of those authors that I really analyze um, as a writer myself because I think that she has the most incredible world building and craft. Um, so I did do it and I filmed it and I just never put it together because you know what there was there was too much fit there was too much footage um but I did it and I had a really good time doing it and my last one was to read 25% non-binary slash trans um and I did not succeed there I think I did like nine in total um so it's not bad it's a little less than 10% um, and it's definitely higher than 2021 was. The only non-binary book that I read was I Wish You All the Best. Um, right? Yeah. So, it's definitely rising. We're just not entirely there. So, my goals for 2023 are to really organize everything so I can start keeping track of my statistics um, and all of that. And I'm actually going to end up using, um, Book Roast's Claw Pile spreadsheet to see if that works for me, to see what things that I want to prioritize and really keep track of, what I think are important, um, and all that fun stuff. So this year I downloaded her 2023 spreadsheet. Um, I'll leave a link to her video that has like the link to her, her download link and all that fun stuff. Um, because it's really well put together. It's really quite beautiful. But I'm going to do that for this year so that way next year I can create my own with everything that I'm prioritizing. Um, so this year's kind of my big experiment year. But I'm super excited about that. Um, it leaves a lot of space for like just keeping track of like publishers, representation, like disability rep, LGBTQ rep, um, POC rep, all of those things that will kind of tell me how my reading's been changing and also how the publishing industry as a whole has been changing because, you know, your reading becomes more diverse when publishers see that that's something that you're valuing. So if it's something that you're keeping track of and something that you're talking about and something that you're participating in active discussion about that shows publishers that they want that you as an audience want more of this kind of stuff so it's all like a big old chain and I want to keep track so I can pay attention and be a more active participant in the publishing world and pushing along those stories that everyone wants to be reading so it'll help a lot with that It'll also help me keep track of my ratings a little bit better to see if I'm having like good reading years or to see more intensely like if I start up a new genre, how, is, how am I going with that genre? Obviously I did thrillers last year, failed. Awful. I'm not a thriller person. Um, but that's okay. It'll help me kind of keep better track of all of these things. So I will have my 2023 reading journal. Um, which I set up on a previous video and went through. Um, I will have my story graph um, to keep just general check of things and then I will have my big spreadsheet to keep a more detailed list of everything that's going on in my reading life and all that fun stuff and it'll give me some nice little graphs and stuff. With that being said, let's go over some of my specific 2023 um, reading goals. For 2023, I really want to focus on writing fantasy. Um, I feel like last year I really stepped away from fantasy and I got a lot into thriller, horror, and romance. Um, and that's not really the direction that I want to go into. I didn't have a bad time with all of that besides thrillers. Um, I really did not have a good time with thrillers. Um, and I, I did my Kindle Unlimited experiment, which was all just, like, basically smut. And I also did not have a good time with that. So I feel like last year was my year of experimentation along genres. And I've come to the conclusion that I really just prefer fantasy. Um, so I kind of want to go back towards that direction and definitely start to get into a lot of adult fantasy 
Um, I did a lot of YA fantasy for a very long time because I'm only 23 and you know I was a teenager <laughs> at that point. I, I was a young adult and now I'm kind of ready to head into the new adult to adult range. Um, so focus on that a little bit more. I'm really excited. I have some really cool stuff coming up with my 2023 most anticipated list. So I'm excited. I'm ready for that. Um, my second goal is to do at least five novel breakdowns in 2023. So a novel breakdown is something that I do that really is just studying a novel for the writing itself, the world building, the character building, the language that's used, all of that fun stuff. So it's not something that I do really to enhance a reading experience. It's more something that I do to kind of focus and study and practice as a writer. Um, so it kind of crosses the line between my reading goals and my writing goals of 2023. It is something that I personally find to be very important. So it's something that I will be doing. I really enjoyed analyzing N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth trilogy. So I would like to do, instead of three this year, I would like to do five. And if anyone's interested in seeing how I do like analyze a novel and break it down from a writing standpoint, um, you can let me know and I can kind of walk through it in a video at some point within the year. I don't, I don't think that anyone would be super interested in that, but if you are, you can tell me and I will do my best. Um, my third goal of the year is to focus on physical reads. So I feel like I did a lot of audiobook reading last year because I started my job at as an embroidery artist and I got the novel experience of like oh my god I get to have my headphones in all day I'm gonna listen to so many audiobooks and do all this stuff and I like audiobooks but I find that I don't focus as well on them because I'm not I'm not an auditory person things kind of just go in one year and then come out the other a lot of the time um and I find that I really I've gotten a pretty good list of podcasts that I like to listen to um and the audiobooks that I generally listen to are like the romance and the thriller and I didn't really have a good time with my romance and thriller last year so clearly something's going on in that department um and I really would like to start focusing on physical reads as much as possible of course I'm still gonna listen to audiobooks but I just don't want them to be my priority. My fourth one is to read through the NB book club this year. So I'm really excited. I'm already um, I'm already over halfway through with the first book for the month. It's All the White Spaces by Allie Wilkes um, and I'm really enjoying this. It's spooky. It's about a trans masked person um, who sneaks onto a expedition to go to Antarctica um, and they get down there and they're getting hunted by things that hunt through the light of the the I don't know I guess the southern lights the borealis whatever um, so it's really interesting so far and I'm really enjoying it and it's giving off like nice spooky vibes like thriller vibes but in a way that I enjoy. I don't have like a coherent thought about it yet. I still have 150 more pages to go. So that's something that I'll talk about when I gather myself a little bit more. Um, and they've already put out their list of books for the next few months. So they usually do it three at a time. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm hoping that I can keep on track and prioritize picking up those books throughout the year. My fifth one is to just read 100 books. That one's standard for me. Um, I don't think that one will ever change. My sixth one, I want to complete my 23 backlog books of 2023. So that is going through and picking up 23 books that I have had on my shelf for a year or more to see if I'm still interested in them to go from there. So I'll go through like really quickly and tell you what they are. Um, so I've got Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. Already read it. Already done. Ruin of Rising by Lee Bardugo, and that'll also complete the series for me. 
um, Legend by Marie Lu. Already done, read it, not continuing with the series, gonna get rid of my copies. Um, Iron Knight by Julie Kagawa, which is the next book in the Iron Fae series that I started when I was just a wee child. So I really, I want to do a reread of that entire series and keep going with it because it's a comfort series for me. Um, Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Girl of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nan. I started reading this as an audiobook. I decided I didn't like the audiobook narrator, but I was still really interested in the story. So it's just kind of been sitting there waiting for me. I own a copy of the first and the second books. Um, so I gotta get on that. Um, the Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo, A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, um, All the Light We Cannot See, I don't remember who that's by, Quiet by Suzanne Kane, Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey, Ice Like Fire, um, Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody, um, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, The Library of Fates by Aditi Korana. Um, Queen of the Conquered by Kaysen Callender, um, History is All You Love Me by Adam Silvera, and Release by Patrick Knapp. So I'm already two down on that list, which I'm gonna say is pretty solid. So I have to read two a month for the rest of the year pretty much, um, which I feel like is, is, pretty, is pretty manageable based on the books that I've chosen. So and that'll help me organize my shelves and get rid of things that I don't want anymore. I want to read five indie published books this year. Um, I'm starting to really get into indie publishing right now. Um, I just think that's kind of nice. And I'm interested to see what people are putting out. Um, I read I Fell in Love with Hope by Lynn Colley last year. Um, and I really, really loved it. So I want to see what authors and smaller publishing houses are putting out there. Um, this year I've already read Crown of Burning Light by Kendall R. Jens and I really liked it. I thought it was a really good baseline like beginner fantasy. And then my final goal, official goal, is to keep track of my reading in 2023 which is what I will be doing between Storygraph, um, my reading journal, and then my spreadsheet by Book Roast. So this is a lot to do. There's a lot of goals here and I can definitely say that I want to go through come June of this year and do like a check-in point for my reading goals of 2023. I don't want it to be something that it pops up come December of 2023 and I'm like oh my god I forgot that I wanted to do that. Like this is something that I want to keep checking in with and kind of keeping track of because these are all things that I do think are important and are pretty basic for me. Um, nothing is really like out there in terms of what I want to do. So I think these are all pretty manageable goals for me. Um, I think that keeping track of everything is going to be my hardest goal. Um, but I'm going to do my best with it and I'm kind of hoping that from 2023 and on I'll be able to compare reading years and see how everything has changed because a part of me really wants to go back to like 2015 me and see what was going on. What was what was I loving? I know what I was loving. I was loving the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Moss. Um, I found that my junior year of high school and I became obsessed with it entirely. I read it like twice that year. But that's that's like what I remember and I want to be able to go back in future years and kind of see where my reading tastes were and how things have changed and maybe be able to like make a list of my my top books from now on. Like just keep track of everything better so I can reference it as I grow and things change. I know that my reading stats of 2022 weren't that great, um, but here's to 2023 being better. Again, I will leave the link to Book Roast's video where you can download 
the spreadsheet in case you're interested in it. Um, I think it's pretty massive and pretty versatile. Um, and if you want a description of how she rates things, that's also in the video that'll be linked down below. Other than that, Tell me what some of your reading goals are for 2023. Tell me what some of your just regular goals are. Like these are only my reading goals. These have nothing to do with my writing or my social media or anything like that. So I'm kind of interested to see what other people are thinking might happen for them in 2023. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day and I will see everyone next time. Bye.